Good evening. Tonight, teachers and pupils fight back against allegations that Muslim extremists are trying to take over their school in Birmingham. They claim their education and futures are being damaged by the controversy, which has dominated the national and local media for months. Well, today our cameras went inside Parkview Academy for the first time. It was in March that a letter detailing a so-called Trojan horse plot became public. Two weeks later, Ofsted made two inspections at Parkview in Alum Rock in the city. And then Birmingham City Council confirmed it had been contacted by dozens of parents, some claiming boys and girls were being taught separately. The investigation widened to 25 schools. Our special correspondent Peter Wilson was given exclusive access to the school today, and here's what he found. The gates and fences surrounding Parkview can seem intimidating, but it's exactly the same as any modern school. They take security seriously. We're the first TV camera team to be allowed inside to see the school for ourselves. Good morning. Good morning. Parkview School is in Allen Rock, one of the most deprived areas of Birmingham. At one time, the exam results were amongst the poorest in Britain. Now these children are getting top grades. But this academy school has also been accused by some of becoming increasingly strict along Islamic principles. These year eight pupils appear to be segregated, girls separated from the boys. Children sit wherever they want to sit. I think boys and girls in any school in the country will automatically sit with the other girls, automatically have to sit with other boys. I don't stop these girls or boys sitting anywhere, they just sit where they like. As far as the head scarves go, I think it's just more of a tradition with the culture that they do that. Nobody enforces them. No one enforces you to wear a scarf, do they? You just do it of your own choice, don't you? The white headscarves are the approved hijabs, but I was told that they're not compulsory. It's your choice if you want to wear it or not. It's not like you have to be forced to wear it. No matter what you do or what you wear, you're treated equally. OK, forehead, properties of aluminium. Miss Beebe wearing the purple headscarf is a science teacher. It's exam time. This revision class had boys and girls sat together. The school is being investigated by the city council, Ofsted and the government. These teenagers claim that the allegations of extremism could affect their job prospects in the future. I was very proud of the school that we had done so well in such a harsh environment, this area being a very deprived area and all of a sudden it got this bad publicity and I would have a feeling that people would stereotype me in some kind of way. There's no extremists uh, being taught here. I mean, um, there's RE lessons, all religions are taught equally. Um, we do community cohesion, however, all religions come in together, uh, people of different cultures come and live together. But for months, allegations like thunder have been rolling around this school. The best way of our pupils avoiding becoming extremists is to give them a proper and true appreciation of their faith. Why then have we heard these allegations about bullying, even Christianity, being denigrated in assemblies? I have no idea why people would, would choose to make those, those allegations. Um, clearly some of them are disgruntled ex-members of staff. You know, when you're taking a school from one which has very low expectations of pupils to incredibly high expectations of pupils, some people along the way are going to feel uncomfortable with that. To hear alarm is the chairman of governors and the man alleged to be at the centre of the so-called Trojan horse plot. I asked him directly about one of the most serious allegations, that at an assembly extremism was promoted and a guest speaker praised a member of Al-Qaeda. These things have never happened in this school and the allegations have been made by people who are anonymous. They have not stated the time when it happened, the date when it happened, and who actually said these things. So in spite of all these things, really, they have been published in the media, and, you know, they've generated a completely false image of our school. One teacher has been at Parkview School for 26 years. He's passionate about what has been achieved here. But what could be lost if Ofsted decide that the school should be placed in special measures? We are arguably the best school in the country of our type and people are talking about us going into special measures. How can you even talk about that? How can that even be a possibility? Parkview School has become the symbol for the whole Trojan horse saga. 25 Birmingham schools are being investigated with 21 of them currently waiting for inspection reports from Ofsted.
Children and staff today were ignoring all of that and trying to concentrate on passing their exams. Well, Peter's here in the studio right now. You spent a long time at the school today, didn't you? What, what's your personal impression? Well, I was allowed to go wherever I wanted and ask whatever questions I wanted to ask. And in the past, uh, as, a, as a reporter, a lot more restrictions have been placed on me by the police or the Home Office as part of my work. So the school was trying to be transparent today. And they also seem to say that if they have got into trouble, it's because they've been listening to parents and have changed the school to match parents' wishes. 98% of the children there are from Muslim families. OK, so what now? What happens next? Well, there is no police investigation into the Trojan plot affair. It is very much an educational matter, and Ofsted will be reporting about 21 schools early next month. Peter, thank you. In